Are you an aspiring teacher who's nervous about that upcoming interview? What if I told you that the questions they're gonna ask are not just about evaluating your skills, but in fact, a golden opportunity for you to stand out amongst the crowd and make an unforgettable impression. Today, we're gonna tackle the tricky questions that you're gonna be asked in that teacher interview. So grab a pen and paper, take some notes, because we're gonna dive right in and we're starting right now. Hey everyone, my name is Gordon and welcome to another episode. If you are here to learn about resumes, cover letters, interviews, Clifton Strengths, teaching and learning, leadership, or anything else education related, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any new episodes. I am so excited for today's content, you guys. Today we're gonna tackle tricky questions that you are going to get in your teacher interview. But we're gonna arm you with a framework that's gonna give you a strategy and a way to attack these questions and give you power-packed responses. But before we get into the content, leave in the comments below, tell me what's the trickiest question you've ever gotten in a job interview? What question did you get that just kind of completely threw you off? I'd love to hear those responses. Drop those in the chat and let's jump right in. Okay, question number one. Can you describe your teaching philosophy? Okay, here we go. Now that question in and of itself gives you a really wide lane. What do you believe? Who are you? What's your identity around wanting to be an educator, about around wanting to be a teacher, around wanting to be around scholars day in and day out for the rest of your career, right? Because every time I look to hire somebody, I am not hiring somebody for the next six months. I'm hiring somebody for the next 25 or 30 years. I want them to make this their career. So when we think about what is your teaching philosophy, what do you believe, what's at the core of your identity, let's use that and now let's apply the STAR framework to that. So STAR, situation, task, actions, results. So the situation. So let's explain immediately when tackling that question, what types of educational settings have we been in? Have we been a part of? That could be your experience as a student in the K-12 setting. That could be your experiences going through higher education. That could be your experiences if you've worked in any type of educational setting. Have you worked in a child care setting? Have you worked in a school previously as a classified employee? Have you been a substitute teacher? All of those different experiences will inform the situation. The task is then to explain your roles and how those roles have now informed that philosophy. So my role as a student teacher equipped me with the knowledge and the skills, and I had a master teacher who really uh, impressed upon me these core ideals around good quality first instruction that really showed me how to differentiate instruction, that really showed me how to give gradual release of responsibility to students and let students grapple with issues and let them learn by growing. Like, so now we're gonna explain what our role has been. And then we're gonna talk about the actions. And the actions are all about discussing the teaching methods now that you will employ and that you will use. Are you going to be a direct instruction type teacher? Are you gonna be a collaborative based teacher? Are you gonna be a teacher who's gonna drive all of your instruction through technology? But now we're gonna talk about the different teaching methods. And then finally, with the STAR method, we're gonna talk about the results. What are the results that I'm going to get because of the philosophy that I have, because of the prior experiences that I've had, because of the way that I have had multiple different places and perspectives from education that have informed who I am, and then I've had these experiences that informed who I am, and then I've taken these actions and I've learned and now I've grown and created these teaching methodologies and these experiences and these, um, and these skills and strategies, and now as a result of all of those things, I'm gonna get great results and I'm gonna be able to drive those results through all of those things. So that develops that teaching philosophy. So you can see 
it's a big, broad based question. What is your teaching philosophy? But I've got a great strategy by showing step by step procedurally and using a framework to tackle that question. It doesn't make it tricky anymore. Now I have a formula for how I can attack it. So that's question number one. What is your teaching philosophy? Be prepared for that question. Question number two, how do you handle classroom management? Now this is a core skill for any teacher. I don't know a principal on the planet who's going to hire a candidate who cannot convey and share that they have a strong command and sense of how they will manage their classroom. It's a core skill. So let's apply the STAR method. Let's assume the situation is that you have a disciplinary issue in your classroom. Let's say, for instance, it is, uh, as we explain the task, so the situation is a dis there's a dip disciplinary issue. The task is to explain that cell phones and cell phone usage is negatively impacting the teaching and learning that's happening in the classroom because students are distracted because of the cell phones. So the action we're going to take is we're going to create a clear set of guidelines, a clear set of expectations, and a clear set of accountability measures that students will be held to if they violate the cell phone policy within the classroom. And then the results that we would share in this response as we're talking with the principal is that as a result of clarifying and creating consistent, evident, and clear procedures and accountability measures, classroom instruction, classroom outcomes, and learning was turned in a very, very positive direction. So that's how we share that how we will manage and, and handle classroom management is by having a structured way of looking at it, approaching it, and then explaining how we'll properly respond. But classroom management is an essential skill. So make sure you are prepared for that, for that question, which is how do you handle classroom management? So question number three, how do you adapt your teaching methods to accommodate for the different learning styles of all of your students? This question taps into your ability to be flexible, to your ability to be accommodating, and to your ability to think outside the box around what are the learning experiences and what are the things I need to create in my classroom that will help all of my students be successful. So let's again apply the STAR method. So the situation is I've got a classroom that has a wide range of different learners, socioeconomically, racially, demo, you know, demographically, culturally. And what I know I have in my classroom is I've got students who are English only students and I have students who are acquiring language. They're English learners. So now the task is how am I going to create a room, a classroom environment where I can meet the diverse needs of all of the different learners in the room? That's my task. I've got to figure out like how do I meet the needs? How do I create learning centers? How do I create learning opportunities? How do I create differentiated instruction? How do I progress monitor where different students are so that way students can be pushed and students can be supported at the same time based on what their needs are. So we have to then, as our actions are, we have to adapt our teaching methods. We're going to have to use lots of different instructional strategies. We're going to have to use lots of visuals. We're going to have to use lots of different mediums. We'll have to do things that are auditory learning. We have to do things that are visual learning. We have to do things that are kinesthetic learning. We have to give students lots of different ways to help them be able to access their curriculum because that's our job is to diagnose how does that happen and what needs to happen and how do I create that learning environment for my students so I can accommodate all their needs. So I look at the situation, understand I have a diverse room. Then I build a task to say, okay, I'm gonna have to adjust my strategies and adjust what I do to create the room and the environment where students can thrive. And then the actions are using multiple teaching strategies and multiple methods, multiple modalities to make sure that I'm connecting with students. And as a result of that, 
the results will be the impact will be a a a very very robust very inclusive very engaging environment for all of our students to learn that will then be data driven and we will see the outcomes because students will move when they feel supported when they feel included and when they have access to the curriculum because i've been accommodating and i've been diverse in the way that i've approached their learning needs these are the types of things you want to really tap into as you're talking with the principal during the interview process question number four and this might be my my favorite question and i might be a little bit biased but I think it's exactly where we have to be focused nowadays. And I don't know that we're paying enough attention. So I'm probably gonna make a bunch of videos on how we tap into this more and more and more. So question number four, how do you incorporate technology into your teaching? You're probably expecting something way crazier than that, but that's, that's the $64,000 question. Because if we are paying attention and if we understand just how disruptive technology has been over the last 20 years and just how fast it is changing, just how fast it is moving, we have got to tap into this. So let me get off my soapbox and let's unpack question number four. So how do you incorporate technology into your teaching? We know that technology is increasingly important in education, plain and simple. We're, we're moving at light speed with respect to how we're integrating technology into the classroom and how we're having high levels of expectation around students' capacity to utilize technology and their competency to use technology. So if we start to think about how we unpack this and think about our response to that question in the context of an interview, well, let's talk about the situation. Let's talk about the last 15 years of how fast and how quickly technology has evolved. I can recall 15 years ago, I think we were still using overhead projectors. I haven't seen an overhead projector for some time. I, I actually had a teacher who uh, up until probably a couple of years ago was still using a chalkboard and, and chalk. Uh, amazing teacher, don't get me wrong. He, was an, he is an amazing teacher, but he was still using a chalkboard. I digress. The point is, that if we think about where technology is headed, I want you to be on your feet and ready to respond to this question, which is, let's look at how fast technology is advancing. My task now is to think about how do I leverage technology to make it a tool for learning that will accelerate student achievement, accelerate student learning, and equip students with the skills, the knowledge, and the capacity to meet the requirements and the necessities of a 21st century world, an inter, a globally interconnected world. So that's the task. So that's, that's the task I need, to, I need to convey that to the hiring committee and to the principal. The action is I've got to get more training. I've got to up, beef up my skills. I've got to do more professional development and more learning, and I've got to become proficient in as many of these modalities and as many of these technologies as possible so I can be a guide. I can be an effective guide. I can be an effective steward of the classroom as it's moving on this technological, technologically driven journey. And the result of it is that I will have digitally effective uh, citizens. I will have digitally competent students. I will have digitally responsible scholars. That's the result. So the situation is technology is advancing and I got to go with it. The task is I got to get trained because I've got to be the guide. The action is build in the, the ability to get professional development and training and learning and nest myself with other practitioners who are technology driven practitioners. And the result is digitally effective students, digitally uh, coherent and competent students that can thrive in a globally interconnected world star that's an effective way to tackle that question and it's an important question and i want you to knock that question out of the park it is very 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 it's critical focus there it's a really important piece all right so we're going to jump into question number five but before we do put in the comments below 
we've already talked about questions and I asked you to talk about the craziest or the trickiest question you've ever gotten in an interview before. But now you've heard some questions that I want you to be prepared for. But what did I miss? What other tricky questions are on your mind that you also want me to consider and maybe talk about in a future video? Put that in the comments below so we can also build some additional support and resources around those questions as well. All right. So question number five. It's an important one because it moves a little bit more to a scenario based question. It's less it's not as static as some of the other questions, but it's more of a scenario based question. So the scenario based question is this. Can you give an example of a lesson plan that you delivered? Now, I, ideally, this might be in a substitute teaching role or even more ideally it would be in a student teaching role. But can you give an example of a lesson plan that you delivered that went exceptionally well? And why did it go well? So this is an opportunity for you to pull out the best of the best that you have. I did this lesson that was absolutely off the charts amazing. Well, let's take it through STAR. First thing, situation. You have the opportunity to showcase an amazing lesson that you have already delivered. So now the situation is think through what's a lesson that you would want to share. Now, think about context. Context always matters. If you're interviewing in a school that has a large number of English learners, and, and if you watch uh, my, my, some of my other videos uh, that talk about understanding how important it is to do research and understand the mission, the vision, and the culture of a school, before you go to interview it for it, so that way you understand that school community. If you understand the context of the school community that you're interviewing with, then you're gonna dig into that, that, that list of quality lessons and you're gonna make it appropriate to the place where you're interviewing. So if you're interviewing at a school that has a high number of English learners and you've got a great lesson that you did that really connected and engaged with English learners, you want to use that lesson. But if you're interviewing in a place that is a steam driven, highly technical, highly math, science, engineering, arts engaged steam magnet school, go to that steam, go to that steam lesson. Context matters. So that's the situation is assessing and understanding where, and then the task, is now to show and describe what the lesson was, how it was effective, and then it's to show the actions, the actions, what were the strategies that you used, what were the modalities that you used, how did you pace the lesson, how did you assess students, how did you push critical thinking skills, how did you use uh, different instructional strategies to increase engagement across all of the students. That's your actions. And then your results are, and these were the outcomes at the end of the lesson. Students demonstrated they were able to do A, B, C, and D. That's the anatomy of a high quality lesson where I can go in and I understand where I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I build out a task that is going to connect and engage. And then I have actions that specifically stretch and push those learners. And then the result is at the end of the day, they can do exactly what I prescribed in the lesson that I wanted them to take away. So when you get the opportunity to showcase a lesson that you've done that went exceedingly well, really hone in on understanding the context of where you are and why you wanna share that particular lesson and then deliver on using that STAR method to really unpack it and take people through it. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a differentiator. That's gonna be something that's gonna help you stand out. Make sure to use that framework. So if you like the content, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend. This is critically important work. We wanna share these resources and this information with as many people as possible, and you can help us do that. The more we share this content, the more you hit that like button, the more people we can reach. So help us out with that. 
And also, don't forget to check the description below for more information on resources and additional content, additional episodes that we have. Um, we want to continue to serve you and serve this community because we know that we can make a difference the more that we share this information. So until we meet again and until we see you in the next episode, be well, everyone, and we'll talk soon. Thanks.